All right, what's going on, y'all? Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Sorry, we had a quick little delay there trying to actually get live. It's been a hot minute since we've had a webinar that I've hosted. But welcome for those of you that are joining us. Um, this is the brand positioning um, uh, webinar that we're talking about, Beyond Aesthetics, Building a Strong Brand Position in the Design Industry. So if you're new here, welcome. We're happy that you're here. Uh, drop in the chat where you're watching from. Um, that will help us a lot as well, just getting to know the people that are involved in what we're doing. Uh, I'm going to give it maybe one or two minutes and we're going to dive right in. I, as per usual, have so much content that I want to share uh, with you all, but at the same time, I'm trying to be courteous to your time and we'll have a way for us to connect afterwards if there's anything that we want to connect about or get more of the resources of what I am offering and delivering uh, here completely for free. There's no sales pitch at the end of this. I'm gonna use all 25 minutes that are left in this live stream uh, to be able to uh, just speak with you about brand positioning. And hopefully this helps you graft and understand, you know, your next steps, what you're going to be doing and how you're, you're wanting to um, help uh, your business, your department, your whatever move forward. Um, so first things first, I'm going to start with a quick introduction here as people are just filing in. Um, and yeah, if there's any questions, please drop them in the chat. I will try to check periodically, as you can imagine. It's just me here. I don't have any moderators or producers or anything. It's not like uh, anything else that I do that's more heavily produced. So I have like multiple tabs going and different screens. And yeah, it's a whole kind of a hodgepodge production here. But I do want to just quickly say hi for those of you that may or may not know who I am. My name is Bart Aniston. Uh, I, I'm a creative strategist uh, at Creative Partner, my agency. It's a brand and web design agency in Toronto. I'm also part of the teaching faculty at Seneca College in the creative arts department. And I uh, am a podcast host. I have a podcast called The More Life Podcast, uh, where uh, we talk about creative entrepreneurship. So you can probably imagine that branding and creativity is a a big part of my life and I take it uh, not so I, seriously but not like that not like in a very very serious serious way it's more of a I'm passionate about it and I very much love what I'm able and afforded to do with my life um, today we're going to be talking about um, uh, brand positioning and I'm very excited to talk about this today. Uh, you know, for those of you that I've been waiting just for a few more people to log in here, for those of you that may know me more for the creative agency stuff that I do, um, I just want to make sure you guys understand, you know, I am, uh, we are focused very much on the design and build in uh, industry, as we call it. So we deal with architects, with interior designers, with building materials, um, commercial or real estate developers. Uh, and we love to cater our content towards that. So that's what this is today. Um, but yeah, talking about today and what we're going to be talking about, uh, we're, we're really going to be understanding uh, where you are in the branding process, understanding what brand positioning is. Um, unveiling your UVP, we're going to talk a little bit about that, your unique value proposition, uh, building a framework for brand positioning, and then we'll have a quick Q&A. Uh, it sounds like a lot for a 30-minute uh, live stream, but it is going to be packed because it is a lot actually to cover in just 25 minutes. Um, like I said, there'll be contact information at the end if you ever want to have conversations um, about what what all is entailed. Uh, the first thing, of course, is understanding where you are in the branding process. When you're dealing with a brand strategy, there is just so many different aspects that are intricate to know and, and you know, necessary to understand. Um, so when you're dealing with having a, uh, 
a full strategy. You can see here, this is a very simplified version of this, is step one, two, three, four across a timeline. The brand hard portion of understanding who you are, your, your values, your vision, your purpose, your mission. And then there is the understanding outward, which is understanding your market and understanding your customers, the buyer personas and competitive analysis. And then we're in stage three here um, where we're kind of focusing on brand positioning underneath the brand messaging category where we're talking about how do we communicate or uh, bridge the two gaps of the brand heart and the market and consumers how do we bridge that is with how we choose to talk with our customers how we choose to engage with them so that comes here with our value proposition and our brand positioning which then leads to messaging pillars and content strategy and you know ad campaigns and all kinds of other more marketing fun stuff and then of course you know there is uh the visual identity of how do we make all this stuff be represented in visual form Form, um, that helps people understand what exactly you do and how you do it. So there's there's lots of good stuff for us to be considering and understanding about brand positioning. I think the first thing we, it's good for us to know is brand positioning is about owning a unique position in the minds of the target customer, uh, the consumer of of who is going to be engaging with your product is most important. Um, there's a big significance in what happens in their mind. And that's what branding in general is. It's how people perceive you. And it's not what you say about yourself. And it's not, you know, a product you you make or something like that. It's not a logo. Branding is how people think about you. And brand positioning is aligning yourself in the right place. It's about making sure that when your target uh, consumers think about your brand, they know the unique benefits that you offer. Not every business is alike. And so it's good for you to be able to be clear on what identifies or distinguishes you from the rest of people. So sh showing the value of your brand to your target audience, brand positioning uh, stands at the heart of marketing strategy. It really helps put you on a you know a different trajectory from your competitors. It's because you've done the work of understanding who you are, what you stand for, what makes you unique, and how you can now set yourself apart. Some people call this your flamingo effect, you know, be a flamingo in, in a sea of pigeons, where you, you are kind of uh, a step above or elevated beyond, not because you're just better than somebody else, but more because you've honed in what your unique passion or identifying feature is, you know, what benefit or feature that I do that's very unique to what I'm doing. So as a brand, you have to show your target audience what you do uh, and make them believe in it. Uh, brand positioning helps you achieve that goal. Uh, brand positioning helps you understand where exactly you need to be to help your business move forward. At the end of the day, when you're starting a business, and of course that's associated with a brand, you want it to be profitable. You want it to be something that is going to help you. So if you're not making money, if you're not standing out, if you're, if it's not leading to sales time and time again, when we do consultations with clients, it's great to have meaningful conversations. It's great to talk great things where we can line up what their passions and their visions are. But if there's no money coming in, then there's nothing to support that dream. There's nothing to help people understand how they're going to change someone's mind to then make a de purchasing decision about what exactly um, your business is offering, whether it's a service or a product. So you, you have to kind of line it up with some goals. Um, and if you're, you know, brand positioning might have a goal of being seen by consumers as premium, as, you know, good value, uh, market leader. Um, a challenger or a safe pair of hands, favorable. It can be any one of these things. But really what you need to focus on is what is the differentiator that I'm going to use to categorize for one of these goals. A great way to deal with this is with a UVP, which is basically a unique value proposition. And this is one of those things where depending who you're talking to, there are people who consider this to be separate. 
from a brand positioning statement. Some people consider this to be sep- uh, uh, together or separate. Some people like to think um, of this as your uh, brand positioning. There's many multiple ways in which order to go through some of these processes. And like I said before, this is not an isolated exercise. So you're going to hear me talk about brand positioning and our unique value proposition. And I'm anticipating or assuming that you um, have done the rest of the work, you know, the prerequisite work of understanding your brand heart, what your purpose is for your business or for your department, you know, what your mission and your vision and your your company values or your business values that you've written out for yourself, um, even your market research and your competitor analysis. These are the things that I'm hoping that you've been able to do on your own to do this portion here, because it is imperative for you to see success or at least clarity. Um, These types of exercises are extremely powerful to help with clarity. Um, So uh, unique value proposition uh, is a succinct uh, explanation of both the uh, functional and emotional benefits your product or service provides to your customer. It's not just who you are and what you do differently, aka your positioning, it's also how you solve their problems and why they should choose you over the competition. The unique part here is the solving their problems. It's one thing to be able to identify what somebody else is going through. It's another thing to be able to insert yourself and find where that intersect is of like, okay, not only do they have this pain point that they're feeling, but I'm also uniquely underline that uniquely poised to help them with the situation that they're going through. Whether if you're a a designer, maybe it's, you know, getting drawings done up or permits done up, these types of things, or having the right connections for the right builders to be coordinated to get the mill work done in the right way, you have a unique understanding with what's going on. So before we can jump to brand positioning, we have to jump into quickly here, your value proposition. Um, So your brand position is based on your value uh, proposition. Your brand position is based on your value proposition. So what makes a good value proposition? A strong value prop uh, needs a strong hook. It needs to communicate your brand's uh, uh, what and why in a way that speaks to your audience, that is super clear. Um, Clarity is so important to brand messaging in general. So you have to really focus on that. And you need to communicate your brand promise and it's descriptive. And again, this could be a whole other session just here talking only about value proposition. I'm just using it as a lead in to talking about brand positioning. So how to create a value prop. Again, we're moving a little bit quickly here, but I want to make sure that you have um, an understanding of the workflow or the flow through thought process that I have here. Um, so we want to make sure that you're clarifying your brand heart. Like I mentioned already before your purpose, which is why you exist, your vision, what future do you want to help create? What, you know, what does that future look like? Your mission, um, uh, what you, uh, uh, what do you do? How do you help create that uh, future and what principles or behaviors do you have corporately or missionally that are going to help you get there? Having a complete competitive analysis, that's one of the things I'm going to be helping you with. Um, It's one of the things that multiple people ask me for, or they don't have a clear way of producing for themselves. Um, At the end, I'm going to put a link in the chat, uh, and you'll be able to log in and get that uh, and download that as well. So having a competitive analysis helps you really zone in to uh, what makes you stand out. And it helps give you that amplifying, like fanning a flame to really amplify what makes you stand out compared to what they are doing. You have to understand what they're doing for you to be actually be able to stand out. You have to know your customer personas. Uh, if you haven't done that, I believe I already have a free download on on, on our company website. And of course, brainstorming your uh, um, functional and your, and your emotional benefits that you have. Um, so 
for us to be able to work through here, I have a bit of a example. Um, when you're working through your rough version, don't think of your customer and the problem. Th sorry, think of your customer and the problem you are uh, trying to solve. And like I said, clarity is super key. So don't get cute. Don't get too fancy. Um, use proper language um, that is conversational or that matches the work that you've done already in, in your brand messaging uh, in terms of your personality, your tone, your voice, all that type of stuff. Make sure you translate whatever you're working on, maybe in your brainstorming session when you're helping with your UVP. Uh, into your language, how you guys actually speak, that match the tone and the cadence of what you've decided your brand is going to So here's an example here of just a template of a unique value proposition. You'll see here, your brand name offers specific service or design approach for target audience who describes their problems or need right here. Unlike competitors, this is where you're putting all the information all together. You're going to highlight your unique advantage and approach to ensure key benefit or an outcome. And if we were to put this in a generic form here, ABC Design, you know, agency, this is an interior design company, uh, offers sustainable, functional, and bespoke interior design solutions for environmentally conscious homeowners who seek to reduce their carbon footprint. Unlike, here's a competitor's traditional design firm, we prioritize eco-friendly uh, materials, and uh, energy efficient practices to ensure a stylish, comfortable, and planet friendly living environment. So you can see all the aspect there of who the competitor is, what their offer is, what is their unique uh, advantage or approach, and what is the 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 main or the key outcome that they're looking for. The main key outcome: healthy planet planet friendly living environment. That's exactly what they're looking for. Okay. Let's quickly go and talk about our brand positioning framework. Okay, so how do we build or translate our unique value proposition into a uh, brand positioning framework? Number one, I just got to always mention your brand positioning framework is always going to be a living document, not necessarily as living as week to week, but maybe semi-annually or annually it gets revisited. The work that you do when you're doing deep branding work is only as good as how relevant and how practical it is to the to your team and the people that are going to be the stakeholders for it. So if it's not relevant or if it's not up to date, if it's not being used or referenced, then it's trash, that you didn't do a good enough job. Um, so when you are considering these things, don't make them into these hard manuals that will collect dust and never get used. You need to, when you are getting buy-in from your team, um, be able to explain to them that this is something that we are going to continually be working on and towards to refine. Because as our vision and our mission and our purpose evolves with the market, the times, the economy, with whatever, our positioning will also need to evolve with those things. And you don't want to be caught, you know, holding a handbasket full of nothingness because people did not care to partake in anything like that. Um, so in terms of our brand positioning framework, uh, you can help uh, uh, build out your brand positioning strategy from multiple different starting points, okay? But the main ones that you're going to always see is like the pricing, the, your characteristics, um, you know, whether it's uh, uh, some of the... the some synonyms that are, you know, are synonymous with your brand, uh, like characteristic traits, like uh, feeling safe or being fun or, you know, reliability. Y you have the, yeah, the price, the characteristics, the use uh, or the quality of your uh, service. So when you're dealing with the framework itself, you you have to make sure that you've thoroughly gone through your target market and your brand promise and your value proposition like we just worked through, right? Um, because we're in the middle of the brand strategy. And it takes time to write down your own propositioning statement. 
Um, so I put out a framework here for you because there's no right or wrong way to write this statement, but you don't want it to be something that is so long that it actually becomes useless and nobody wants to look at. So for uh, um, identify the ideal seg market segment. So you need to be very clear. Um, so this is, you know, this could be for the business person who's starting a new company. What is the product or the service? Provide a concise description. This is going to force you to use specific language, and then you have to put it into practice to use this type of language um, consistently so that it trickles down to all the people on the front line, as well as your customer service reps, as well as your sales team and your marketing team and your social media captions. Use the same lines for everything. And you have to identify specifically who is this for. Uh, describe best use application for this product. And it is better than what? Identify primary competitor and com uh, competing approach. So each one of these items here, this is a small three sentence paragraph that explains this uh, and then cite you know the differentiations and any evidence that you have to back that up um, you have to think of you know the resulting brand positioning statement as an elevator pitch it's short in enough to be shared with anyone but have enough for them to understand what your company is and what it does and who it's for okay so when you're dealing like i mentioned at the top here when you're dealing with something like this, you have to communicate and improve your brand positioning over time. That framework that I just showed you, this guy right here, great. This is excellent for you to have because it's it's broken up piece by piece to be able to share with your team. But now, like I mentioned, you need to make sure that it's something that is alive and well inside of your company. And it's not something that just sits in a shelf somewhere or in a filing cabinet. I hope this has been really helpful for you guys. I know I, I'm covering a lot of things um, top level and, you know, there's always opportunities to go deeper and further within um, the brand strategy. This is just one piece uh, that helps you find some clarity and give you some peace of mind when dealing with helping your team learn and understand who we really are serving, what makes us different, and how do we solve our customers' problems to become vital to their, you know, daily lives or to their business day-to-day uh, uh, -day living. Okay, I've been talking for a hot minute. I'm going to take a quick sip of water, but I'd love to hear from you guys if you have any questions uh i'm checking just the youtube chat so if there is a youtube chat that you, you on your screen that you're watching feel free to um put a question in there and i'll make sure to uh keep an eye out for it i know we're running a little bit out of time here um but I just want to remind you guys that there are lots of opportunities to get involved in learning more about branding and brand strategy and making sure that, you know, you're improving your brand strategy over time. Um, quick thing I want to make mention is data, communication, and vision. Okay. Like I mentioned, vision changes sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes the, the industry and the market will force you to adjust how you're doing or operating your business, which means you'll have to adjust or amend how you um, plan to uh, identify or differentiate the differences uh, inside your businesses as well. Communication, any shift in brand positioning will require tough conversations with leaders and departments um, throughout your whole team or organization because you got to have buy-in from everyone to make it a success not everyone will agree but this is where the final point is so important um, lastly is data only make decisions on real data and inf information everyone lies but numbers don't lie you know when you see the raw information on unaltered or anything like that. Um, you should know your current and your present your potential market um, segments so that if they shift in any way, um, you have to find a way to better suit their needs. At the end of the day, you're really trying to um, help customers and that's who you really work for. So if you're not 
actually helping people find a way to solve the solve their problems you can have the greatest marketing the greatest ad spend all these different things it's never going to be enough to have a f- actually sustainable business model i see in the comments there monica thanks for sharing very informative and insightful monica i appreciate you uh hopefully we'll get some coffee soon i really appreciate you it's been a long time since we've seen each other okay guys I, I want to be respectful of your time. If there's no other questions that are here, um, here's the last part. Okay. I'm going to drop inside the chat here. Where is the link? Sign up at this link here if you want to get some of the free resources that I mentioned, mainly the competitor analysis doc that I'm putting in here. Um, you can go ahead and sign up there. Just drop your email. And you'll be able to uh, have access to it. It's one of the hardest parts that people say is, you know, being able to do the personas. I don't know why, but uh, that one I don't understand. But the uh, uh, competitive analysis is something that somehow is a little bit more complicated for people to wrap their heads around to do a meaningful deep work. This is why it's so powerful to be able to, to connect with professionals to help you with this. I know in the, these type of times, we're dealing with lots of independent firms, small studios, small firms, and they want to do everything in-house. It, it gets a little bit complicated and it gets a little bit hard. So if you ever have any questions that you want to connect with us, uh, my handle basically anywhere on LinkedIn or, or Instagram or anything like that is Bart Aniston. And my email, uh, which goes directly to me, is Bart at creativepartner.ca. Please reach out. Uh, Bab Tunde, uh, thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate you being here. Uh, it's, always, it's always great to be part of a, a growing and thriving community. And I feel like YouTube is that for us, or at least for me and my business. So I love uh, using YouTube. So if you came from LinkedIn, thank you so much for supporting and making the journey all the way to YouTube. Um, The links and everything are on the screen and in the chat if you're just popping in. And uh, I appreciate you guys and have a good one. I'll see you.